my name is Odemi Pasu and I am the author of Force of Nature, my debut book about African womanhood, honoring divine feminine energy and finding strength in emotional liberation as well as vulnerability. I want to talk a bit more about what it is I'm trying to do here. What is the point of this, I guess, series, so to speak, and why do I feel that it is vital for me to share not only lessons from my life but also things that i have spent like the last six years of my life researching and dedicating my academic and professional prowess to exploring and you know how that all ties in to my overall goal of bringing world peace bringing light and love and energy and positivity into the world and especially rejuvenating women everywhere and inspiring women everywhere to own their agency and their power as well so how does that all tie in together i'm going to talk about it but first i just want to talk a little bit about me and my journey here and like why am i here why am i talking to y'all about women all the time why am i always talking about women's rights why am i always talking about sexual health why am i always talking about mental health why does it matter i'm gonna talk about all of this um so i am a recent brown graduate well i guess maybe not that recent but i went to brown university for undergrad where i studied international relations and political economy and my focus was pretty much on post-colonial development in nigeria and the broader african continent and i did more specific research on women in particular, maternal health care, um, avenues for upward socioeconomic mobility, labor diversification, and emboldening women in the private sector. And then I furthered that research in grad school, also at Brown University, where I attained my master's of public affairs. I was still focused on the same subject matter, but just from more of a infrastructural perspective and looking more from like a systemic lens like what are these institutions doing about these issues how do they make decisions what is the data that drives these decisions and that's how that's how force of nature came about and it's because in academic spaces in professional spaces and governance oriented spaces i guess women are not heard we are not like i could tell you this right now i have been the only woman and then you know the only african woman in a lot of spaces where decisions are being made about people like me you know and it upset me because i feel that no actually i know that my livelihood should not be determined by someone who doesn't who, who knows nothing about my culture knows nothing about what i go through as a woman knows nothing about the forces that i face every single day like that was pretty much the frustration that led me to say okay it is time it's time to publish that book that i've always wanted to publish so after I published the book, I was like, oh, this is great. But then I was like, damn, I gotta market it. I gotta make people read it. I gotta do all of this stuff. And I was like, how am I gonna do that? It was just a lot. And I was like, okay, it's it's kind of doing me a little bit. So I had to step away and take a break. And for me, I'm not like the hugest fan of social media, but I believe in the power of creative media to affect change and to inform people and educate people. I think society is, one, moving away from honoring delayed gratification in a very, very, very scary way because to get to, you know, a place of success in your life, right? And, and however you define success, you know, define it for yourself. But for me, success is the freedom and the agency to choose how I honor my gifts on a day-to-day -day basis and to receive an abundance of income for honoring those gifts. That is what I've always kind of oriented my journey around, like getting to that point of freedom and that point of independence. And I 
feel that in society right now, we're not really encouraging women to explore that side of themselves. It's always like on these extremes. It's either you're into fashion and beauty and that's just all you care about and you're like, you're not academic at all. Or you're like the super rigid academic masculine woman who only cares about career and work. And I've always, I've always been a free spirit. I've always been someone who loves to read. I love to write. I like to interrogate the world around me, but you know, on the outside, I just kind of look like I like to live my life and have fun, which is true. And I have definitely seen how in certain spaces that has made people really uncomfortable. I, I just don't think I've ever really been this super palatable person. And so that was a huge struggle for me. And in writing Force of Nature, I was able to take those creative parts of myself and then also take these academic interests that I have, you know, talking about state sanctioned violence, talking about feminized violence and talking about issues of, you know, emotional intimacy. Why isn't that talked about enough? Like, why do we just preach sexual liberation and not teach women how to honor their emotions and how to honor their wants and their needs before they go and share themselves and enter new experiences unprepared. Just things like that, I never really had an outlet to talk about them in a creative way, but then I had the opportunity when I was writing this book. So I have decided that I want to create like a little IGTV series where I talk about those inspirations behind the subject matter in this book. I just wanted to create this series where I can embolden women to courageously not only ask questions of themselves and the world that they live in, but also to not feel ashamed to share the answers when they find them. I felt that I was like, I don't know, I felt like I was kind of upsetting God <laughs> in a way, or like just not honoring my authentic self by sitting on some of the wisdom that I've acquired in the past few years. I wanna find like-minded women who are not scared to have discourse about things that make people uncomfortable. And you know, I'm just gonna wrap this up real quick because this is just kind of like a little intro. It's like, wow. So if you made it to, <laughs> if you made it to the end, thank you because there's a treat for y'all. I'm gonna read a poem. But before we get there, I just wanna say, just because somebody doesn't wanna hear what you have to say doesn't mean that you don't need to say it. You always need to speak your truth. And I just believe that women, African women especially, my people, because we be suffering, man. Like, we be going through it in a way where it's like, not only do we have to navigate these structures that are just not built with us in mind, but then it's sometimes like we're enslaved by our own culture and our own traditions. And I'm tired, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing this with y'all. I'm speaking my truth, I don't care who gets upset, and I am inviting others to join that conversation. So if you're interested, stay tuned because I have some things to say and they deserve to be heard. So in the meantime, I am going to read a poem called I Write What I Like from my book, Force of Nature. And this poem was inspired by Steve Biko. So actually, wait. I think I have I have my little like library here. Okay, so this is the book that inspired this poem. And Steve Biko is, or he was, a South African activist that was murdered by South African police because of his revolutionary ideologies. And what inspired me a lot about that book is that he wrote most of those writings, I'd say, between his mid and late 20s. And guess what? A lot of the women who are just kind of looking at the world right now and are like, what the fuck is going on right now? Like, and are, I guess, largely, I'd say affected by some of these restrictive laws and ideologies are do, 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 mid to late 20s. And I don't think it's by coincidence. And I just, you know, I'm tired of seeing us silenced and discouraged from saying our stories and saying our truth. So I wrote this poem kind of as like 
a speech in a way where I'm encouraging those women who want to walk in their power. But here it goes. I write what I like. <clears throat> I believe that African women must find our own revolution and that we must prepare to bear arms for our virtue and our right to the treasures of this earth. And I am infatuated with this imagining of the African woman, free, uninhibited, and daring to be more, more than a mother, sister, lover, or a pillar standing still and patiently waiting to receive. When, in fact, we created love in all her glory, and our breasts bear Aphrodite's kiss, and our minds move mountains as our thoughts roar loud, and the thunder shakes to the rhythmic step of our feet. So yes, we are the siren's delight, singing a song that can break you and enchant you all the same. The African woman is ethereal, uniquely bound to a celestial host, the sun, the moons, the stars. Our beings are connected with the land and the sea and the middle ground where the two kiss and finally meet. So I take this to mean, and no, I do not say it respectfully. We must sink the ships of pirates in all their unique forms and castrate audacious men who try to claim our shores. We must rumble the foundations of those coliseums in the middle of which we stand. We are no longer servants. This is our holy land. I pen this note to my valiant sisters, those awake and those who sleep. This is a call to action. Please read this carefully. Where oceans rise, our feet will not fall. Where the earth crumbles, we will stand tall. Where cries break glass and fires rage on, we will conquer calamities and the crack of lightning's whip. May I remind you the lineage from which we come. We are the span of evolving moons, the infinite range of stars. And lest you forget our power, we are the fortitude that burns incessantly with the raging sun. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So, my dear sisters, after you have heard that poem, please go on about your day, go on about your week, knowing that you have the power to just honestly take this life by storm and to be the force of nature that you were meant to be, okay? And there's more where that came from, you know, there's, there's gonna be more, but this is this is just the first thing. This is, this is the beginning of something that I hope will be very beautiful. So thank you for watching and have a great week.